The meeting of the Public Safety Committee is now called to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Bosley. Alderman French. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Carter. Present. Alderman Coulter. Here. Alderman Spencer. Present. Alderman Green. Chairman Kennedy. Here. Six present. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, we are here today to continue the process of interviewing the nominees for the Civilian Oversight Board. Uh, we had two individuals uh, that have been nominated last week, and we have two others here today. But before we get started, we also have some special guests of uh, Alderwoman Davis. She didn't know I was going to do this, but um, can you introduce them? We have some international guests here today observing our proceedings related to civilian review. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, my name is Deka, I'm from United Kingdom, and we're here to visit San Luis, and thank you very much for having us. Uh, I know lots of councillors or aldermen from UK, so it's interesting to see how things are done in here in the United States, so thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My mm -hmm. name is Memerika Dao. I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm here representing an organization called Crisis in Zimbabwe Coalition. Thank you. Well, it's our pleasure having you here today, and we welcome you. Thank you, all the women. Uh, first at 10, we have Mr. Bradley Ortega, who is one of the nominees for the Civilian Oversight Board, if you would have a seat here. And then just at the beginning, take a few moments to um, go over your background, why you're interested in uh, serving on the Civilian Oversight Board. Just sure. give us a little bit about you. Sure. My name is Brad Ortega. I'm uh, 49 years old. I've uh, lived, I'm have i a lifelong St. Louis, and I grew up in North St. Louis. Spent most of the time in North St. Louis, more than South St. Louis. I, look, res, I uh, grew up in Baden neighborhood. Um, live now in St. Louis Hills. Um, very active in the community. I was president of the Neighborhood Association. Um, now I uh, run our family business that my grandfather started in 1927. So uh, I try to stay in touch with what's going on in St. Louis. And I, I, you know, I, I just try to give back a little bit to what St. Louis has given to me. I try to give back. Okay. We can begin with any questioning. Uh, Alderman French, any questions? Good morning. Good morning. Um, how did you uh, come about um, being nominated for this board? Did you um, did you nominate yourself, or somebody? Did someone approach you, or? Um, actually, I contacted uh, our older woman, Donna Berenger, and I had her. I I told her I was interested in doing it. Okay, and um, could you just talk a little bit more about why you would want to serve on this board? I think it's uh, part of the. You know, I'm. A, I always like to stay in touch with what's going on. Uh, I was president of the Kings Highway Business Association. Uh, you know, it's it's an outreach to what's happening in St. Louis. So I think that uh, I just wanted to be involved. Okay. Um, do you have any um, relatives or close friends that are uh, city employees or specifically uh, employees of the St. Louis Police Department? I don't have any relatives, but I do have a lot of friends that are on the police department. Okay. Um, one of the questions on your application is, uh, please describe your experiences, good or bad, with police officers. Um, your answer said you had no problem with the St. Louis police, but have you had interactions with uh, the police? Um, were they positive? Were they negative? Well, I mean, growing up in Baden, I mean, it was a little bit different. Uh, you know, I stayed there until I was 27, so I mean, it wasn't that I ever had a run in with the law. I'd never been arrested or anything like that. But I mean, I didn't fear the police as much as I feared my grandfather or my father. So I always tried to stay in a line that, uh, mm -hmm. that you know, I, f I feared them more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why did you guys move out in Baton? Uh, I mean, it was just, uh, I mean, our studio, my, my parents were getting older. I was getting married, so I left when I got married. My parents, we uh, gutted the upstairs of our studio. It's a residence upstairs and a commercial business downstairs. I gutted it. They moved up there uh, just because, 
you know, it was time for them to move closer so I could watch my parents. Okay. Um, so what do you think is the role of this civilian oversight board and what would be your role as a member of it? I mean, I, I think that the uh, oversight board is going to be, I mean, it's kind of early in what it's going to do. Um, I mean, a lot of the policies haven't been written yet, so um, I think that uh, it, it looks to me, I mean, right now, is that we're going to be like a jury to what's going on. Um, I mean, it, it's uh, hopefully it will, you know, combat some of the uh, tension between the public and the police department. Um, no more questions right now. Okay. Alderman Vaccaro. You know, I don't have questions, but when you said you were most afraid of your dad and grandpa, <laughs> I remember Mike Tyson once saying, they said, are you afraid of anybody? And he says, yeah, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, except I was probably really afraid of my mom. Anyway, I have no questions. Thanks. Oh, you don't? Oh. <coughs> no, I <definitely>. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Carter, you didn't have Alderman Coder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ortega, could you just expand a little bit, tell us about your businesses? I see here you've got a photo studio and some donut shops. Could you just tell us about those, <laughs> how long you've been in those businesses? Sure. The, the photography studio, I went into the family business, so that was, that was started in 1927, but I went to work there in 1984. The donut shop was a building that was on King's Highway that was vacant for 17 years and I was tired of the way it looked. And so I bought the building, um, I refurbished the building. Um, I talked to a guy that was working at the donut driving at the time, his name is Eddie. I said, you want a, your own spot? And he said, I'd love it. So I bought all the equipment, gave him a key and I said, that's where you're working tomorrow. So that's the donut shop opened up in February of 07. So. All right. Um, are you still a board member of the Second uh, District Police Association? Yes. Okay. And could you explain a little bit about your involvement, what you do in that association? Um, the association itself, basically, we have our meetings every month. They just go over the crime statistics, or you know, or what the the we give out scholarships to the police officers. Uh, family when you know their kids are in in grade school and high school if they write an essay for a scholarship um, we asked the captain um, at the time what the officers may need if they need flashlights if they need jackets or you know we bought bikes in the past um, for the bike patrol um, you know it's it's just a, a helping tool a lot of the businesses in the second district give back to Thank you. No further questions. No further. Okay. Alderwoman Spencer. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Ortega, thank you so much for being here today. Um, can kind of expounding on uh, Alderman uh, Coder's questions, I guess uh, my question with regards to your involvement with the Second District Police Association, do you think that will drive any of your perspective uh, as a member of the board? You know, I was, uh, I was wondering. If, if it ever came to a conflict, I mean, it would be no problem for me to step away. I mean, it, it's, I don't believe it's gonna be an effect, but if it does become some sort of issue, I, there's, there's no doubt I would step away from it. Step away from your involvement with and, the association? Well, going off the board, yes. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about your involvement in your neighborhood association? It says here that um, you are president of St. Louis Hills, and you mentioned that briefly in your opening. Can you talk about um, what drove you to do that, maybe how long you served, and what uh, changes you were, brought, were able to bring to your neighborhood association? Well, the one good thing about St. Louis Hills Neighborhood Association, it's very strong. There's a lot of money in the bank. Um, we've, we have a lot of, it's not that we have a lot of fundraisers, but the, there's a lot of people that come out to donate their time also. Our main focus is the park. Uh, Francis Park, since it's a neighborhood park, we really uh, put a lot of our efforts into that. Um, since I was, I was president for four years, three and a half, four years, something like that, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I went through the whole cycle of being on the board and then going up, moving up to the president. Um, I, you know, 
as far as the changes that I made, I mean, I don't, I think that it runs, it's a very fine, well-oiled machine, and I didn't try to change too much. Thank you. Um, so in, I guess in your opening, or maybe it was in response to Alderman French's question, you talked about the board being able to address some of the tensions between the police department and the community. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you see those tensions being and um, how, you, how you envision the board being able to kind of address some of those? Um, I think that, you know, this is something that's it's across the nation. There's very few police departments that don't have a civilian review board. So I think that this is um, a long time coming to St. Louis. So I think it's, uh, it's going to be a learning experience and there will be a learning curve to it at first. But I think it's, um, you know, when something arises or, you know, something that happens inside the department. And, you know, if you have another layer that could actually look at what the Eternal Affairs does or the state looks at it too, that, you know, you would definitely find that if there's a discrepancy there that, you know, that you could see it with three different sets of eyes looking at it. Great. I think that's it for me. I appreciate your time here today. Thank you. Alderman Green. Thank you. Good morning. Um, good morning. Could you describe for me, um, you know, one of the the things that we're looking for in this board is really to have a, a diverse cross section of, of people from our community. Do you describe to me kind of how you work with people who maybe have a different background or different point of view um, from you? And if you do have a different point of view, how do you how do you build consensus? Well, I think. You know, that's part of, uh, you know, the American paper put me down as a white business owner. You know, they don't know me. I mean, the thing is that I'm from Baden. I mean, I lived in Baden longer than I lived in South St. Louis. And then I approached her afterwards and I said, hey, why'd you put that in there about me? I said, you know, and then we started talking about it. I mean, I have friends all across the board. I mean, I have still friends from up north. Uh, I have friends from South. I mean, we still do a lot of stuff together. Um, my friends are my friends. So, I mean, they're lifelong friends. And, uh, you know, dealing with, with people that I don't agree with, I mean, we always find a mutual part. We can uh, agree to disagree, but we always find a ground that we could work together with. And um, could you describe a little bit what your, um, you know, time commitment is to this? We, we don't really know as of yet how much time it's going to take. Right. Um, so what is, what it, can you describe kind of your flexibility of your schedule or, you okay. know, how all these other things that you're, you're involved with could, you know, relate to, to your involvement on the COB? Well, one good thing is that the donut shop runs itself. I do not go down, I'm not hands-on with that. I don't make donuts. You don't want these hands making you anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the studio is, you know, photography is a little bit different than it was 20 years ago. Digital has really made it a lot different. I mean, I work a lot from um, a computer from my house. Um, our studio is still, I mean, I go there every day, but it's not like what it used to be. I'm no longer on the board of St. Louis Hills. I have the best title ever. It says past president. Uh, you know, so um, that opened up a lot. I mean, that was 30 hours a week. St. Louis Hills was 30 hours a week. So, um, you know, it's, I think that, you know, I mean, I think that other people have probably a little bit shorter amount of time to play around than I do. <laughs> right. And if, you know, if you, you know, get on this board and, and you find that you don't have access um, to all the information that you feel like you need to really make an informed um, decision uh, about a case what would what would you do uh, I mean for one I wouldn't know why we wouldn't have all the information but I mean if we didn't I mean I would try to pursue it in my own way and to try to bring it back to the board to try to find out you know if there's an issue with a person or you know why aren't we getting this information I mean I would try to figure it out okay thank you no further questions Alderman Cohn you weren't here in our first pass. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, Alderman Vaccaro, you had a follow-up. I, I just was going to expand on that. I think that every business, I know we belong to Second District Business Association, mm -hmm. and you're one of a bunch, and I assume every neighborhood has that. And I know when I belonged to it, 
even though we did the stuff or interacted with the police, it, we were pretty much one step back from it. I mean, they have the board, they have, so being on the uh, second district, uh, a member of the second district business association for, you know, toward the police department really is not anything more than most all businesses join it. We don't, we're not privy to any kind of information at all. So, I mean, we, we get crime statistics just like we would at the neighborhood association. So. From, my, from our talk, it's understanding your family, is, you're now third generation Correct. migrants. Could you tell us just a little bit about that? Uh, your, your own background, your family came the, from? My, my grandfather came from Spain. Well, he came with his father, but it, um, they went through uh, uh, Mexico. They, they were down there when Pancho Villa was kind of going crazy. So they went up to New York, Chicago, and then they came here to St. Louis and they settled in the park that's right across the street from the, uh, on 14th Street over by the Shell Building until the Spanish maids came and picked them up because they couldn't speak English. Um, my grandfather self-taught him, self-taught English, uh, quit grade school at fifth grade, you know, so uh, there was six kids and, and all of them did very well for themselves. Any other questions from members of the committee? Oh, Marlene, pardon me, all of them from the 19th. Good morning, and uh, thank you for bringing your guests. <laughs> all right, thank you. One of the things that um, I know from my experience in working with business associations and neighborhood associations um, is that it requires you to have a lot of discipline and understanding uh, and working out situations. Most of what you're going to be doing on this uh, oversight board is uh, identifying where things may or may not have gone wrong. Have you all had any very uh, conflictual situations, ever had one in your neighborhood that you could explain how it uh, actually unfolded and how it was resolved? Well, I mean, with a neighborhood association, I think um, people on the board, especially St. Louis Hills, I mean, people do not, unless they put a resignation in, there's still stay on the boards. The board is actually large. Mm -hmm. So when you have a, an issue with a board member, there might be 20 of them. And try to deal with 20 personalities is kind of rough sometimes. But, um, you know, it, it came to the history of St. Louis Hills. And so in the history, one person had it. And she didn't want to give it to the, to the board to, to put in a safe spot because she didn't like a few of the board members. So, I mean, we were able to get a group of people that she actually got along with, and we were able to, you know, get the information that we needed. I mean, it was, it was I wouldn't say it was city property. It was just stuff that was collected, and I, and I think it was very important for the history of St. Louis Hills. So we were able to get a spot at St. Gabriel's Church in the Gabriel House, and she agreed that if it stayed there, that she would give up the inf you know all the the things that she collected over the time, so um, I think that with a with a board or you know difference of personalities of any sort, you find a common person or people, and then able to work a deal with you know the ones that don't agree with everybody. So I mean I I don't know that it's just dealing with personalities I would I would think. I'm going to share something. Um, I actually use Eddie's Donut Shop a lot. I would have never dreamed that you would be the owner because the people there are out front. It's a diverse group that works there. Everybody takes leadership and the product is good. So that says a lot for how you operate to see that business operate the way it does. Thank you. And. Uh, I've been trying to get them to come to my ward as a second place. <laughs> Thank you. The follow -up? Alderman French has a follow-up. Sure. Okay. I just wanted to ask you a few more questions. Um, 
First, in, in your, one of the questions on the application is about social media, and I see that you're on Facebook. And I checked out your Facebook page here, and I see that um, one of your likes or friendships is the St. Louis Police Officers Association. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your relationship with the Police Officers Association? I mean, when uh, I was younger, I mean, we used to, my father used to be hired by the Police Officers Association to take pictures at their dinner dances and all their stuff. But since, um, you know, digital photography came along, and even probably, I mean, it was before that, but I never got to do the jobs that my father was, you know, was able to do when we were younger. But um, just because photography became a little bit like I don't know more mainstream I mean when he was doing it, he was doing what four by five so you didn't have as many people as photographers as you do now and a lot of people just do it with their phones now so uh, the stuff that they do but I mean that's just one of the likes on there and would you consider yourself a friend of the police officers association I mean I know a lot of the police officers I mean I know them yes okay um do you think your relationship with the police union um, would um, make you less than impartial? Probably not. Hmm. I mean, it's. It, I mean, I know uh, people there. I mean, I've grown. I went to high school with them. I mean, there's people that are on that board that I went to high school with, or that work there. So, I mean, I I cannot say that. You know, I'm gonna bypass a friendship uh you know but i mean i'm not going to say that uh if something's wrong something's wrong and i i am be the first one to tell you that something's wrong i mean but you do understand that, that almost every complaint that this board will examine will be a complaint against a member of the st louis police officer association i understand that i mean and also having some sort of Im information that other people may not have could possibly help in favor of the accused? No, I mean, I wouldn't say in favor. I'm just saying that there's there's information that I hear, you know, that, you know, somebody else may not hear. You mean information other than the facts that are presented no, to the board? No, I'm just saying that, I mean, it's just that I know, like, just to say that if a friend, a friend of yours or whatever, I mean, you know their, their stature, you know, you know how, you know, you know how they act. You know what I mean? I think I do. I just think we disagree. I think if it's a friend of mine, I would probably recuse myself from uh, being in judgment of them. Well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't agree with that, but I mean, that's, that's fine. So if there was a friend of yours that a complaint was filed against him or her, and you were a member of this board to uh -huh. examine that complaint, um, you feel it's appropriate for you to be um, on that board? Yeah, if the complaint is like a real complaint, then it's a complaint. I mean, I could still do my job. I mean, that's, I mean, if you're a leader or if you're a, you know, a, a person that makes a decision for somebody else, yeah. I mean, you have to do what you have to do. So you would not recuse yourself in that situation? I mean, I would look at what the, the problem was. I mean, if it's, I mean, if it's horrible, I mean, just think of the worst thing that could ever happen. You you would have to uh, look at the facts. Of what if what it's it not is. so horrible? What if it's not a death? Maybe it's just uh, um, planning evidence or um, that's horrible. Or stealing. That's horrible. I mean, I had you know, I, to this day, I have a friend of mine that was a police officer. He was accused. He went to jail. I don't talk to him. I'm I'm sorry. You know, you did. You took an oath. And you didn't do what that oath said you were going to do. I don't talk to him. I don't have time for him. I'm sorry. Okay. No more questions. Okay. Are there any other questions? Uh, Alderman Vaccaro. I just actually Alderman French. So I think what you're I think what you're asking is, and maybe I'm getting this wrong, that if you're on the board and it comes up and it's an officer that you know is a friend. Not to recuse yourself from the board, but would you step aside from that one and say that I have a personal relationship with this one particular case? And I think I think that's what you were getting at, isn't it? Not necessarily from the board, but if it's a if himself, from a particular yeah, case. Well, I mean, if that's what the I think if I, the I mean, case I, if the curious. if the board itself comes back with you know like 
we don't know if these things are written yet. So, I mean, if there's a time where that comes up and I can do that and then I stay on the board, I mean, I, I want to be on the board. So, I mean, the thing is, is that if something comes up, I mean, and they say that you, you know this person just like in jury duty. I mean, do you know this officer or do you know this person here? I mean, same thing. Yeah, but mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I, don't, I don't think the question was, would you get off the board? The question was, <laughs> would you excuse myself from, from that particular? Sure. Right. I mean, if it's that close to front, yes. Right. Okay. That's where I think some of the confusion came in at. Are there other questions from members of the committee? If not, we thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having an interest right. in serving as well. Thank you. I see we have our second individual here, even though it's before 11 o'clock. Let's take advantage of the opportunity if you come right on up. We next have Deborah Ahmed, who's the other nominee uh, that will be before us today. We have her background information first. We'd like to thank you for expressing an interest of being on the Civilian Oversight Board and uh, being willing to, to take out the time to serve on it. You're welcome, um, thank you. As was mentioned earlier, this is a historic process. We're just for the first time for the city, so we're, it's a learning curve that we're going on as well here. You do know that this committee, a public safety committee and the Board of Aldermen confirms the nominees. Mm -hmm. And so this gives us the opportunity to get a feel for you. So if you could just talk a little bit about your background and your interest, why you're interested in serving on the Civilian Oversight Board, and then we'll go through uh, the committee list by seniority. Sure, okay. uh, and I would like to say good morning to all of you all and thank you again for having me here. Thank you, Alderman Kennedy. Um, as you know, I'm Deborah Ahmed. Um, I guess I'll tell you my age. I'm 60 years old now. I just had a birthday <laughs> in August. Um, I am um, most closely associated with uh, Better Family Life as an organization that many of you all probably uh, affiliate me with. I am a co-founder of that nonprofit and I currently serve as the executive director of the Better Family Life Cultural Educational and Business Center. Uh, one of my passions is dancing. I have been dancing since the age of five. I still consider myself a professional dancer. I still perform, choreograph, and teach. I'm also a jewelry designer. I love to travel. I love to study um, about different cultures, which drives me to also travel internationally on a kind of regular basis. Um, I love um, talking about my culture and using it as a means to support, empower, and enhance all those whom I touch and interact with. So. And your interests. Well, what brought you to becoming interested in serving, serving on civilian oversight? A voice inside my head said, Deborah, you can do this. It was really just that simple. When I heard that the bill was about to uh, go before uh, the full board to be voted on for approval, I was just driven to do it because I said that I believe that I can make a change. I believe that my life experiences, my values, my sense of ethics, how I see um, humankind all lends itself to the work that must be done on this civilian oversight board. Um, it hurts me deeply that not only our city has been so impacted negatively and in many ways has been divided because of how people think, how people act. Um, and I believe that we need to go forward in a positive manner, a productive manner, to make our city a better place, our metropolitan area a better place to live, work, go to school, raise a family, and grow. So that's why I'm here. Oh, thank you. Questions from members of the committee, Alderman French. Good morning again. Um, one of the questions on the applications uh, just asked you to talk about um, any positive or 
negative personal experiences you may have had with police. Mm -hmm. um, mention uh, incidents um, not necessarily involving you, but your husband and son. Yes. Can you talk about those a little bit? Yes, I will. Um, I'll talk about my husband first. Um, I was driving at the time a pretty um, raggedy Toyota <laughs> that I used to own down Lindbergh. I was headed north of Lindbergh, close to where the um, Plaza Frontenac is now. It was nighttime, and I had a rear tail light out. The police pulled me over. My husband was sitting next to me in the passenger seat and his seat was reclined, so from the back you could not even see that there was someone else in the car with me. The police officer came up to me. He shined his light in the car. He asked me for my ID first. He saw that my husband was next to me, went around to the other side and asked him for his ID, which really perturbed me because he was not driving, he could not be seen, uh, it was not his car, and he had absolutely nothing to do with the tail light being out. I um, subsequently uh, talked to the captain of that police department, and I put in an official complaint. I got the police officer's badge number, and I put in a complaint. That was my first probably negative experience with the police, and that was in the early, maybe around 1985, 86. The second, second incident that happened, um, my son and I, uh, he was probably around 15 at the time. He was about 5'11", so he was taller than me. We were walking in front of the, um, what is now the Better Family Life Cultural Educational and Business Center at 5415 Page Boulevard. We were just checking out the property to make sure everything was okay. It was before we moved into the building. And he and I were in front and I had a hoodie on, because it was chilly. Police officer was driving west on page. He saw Shabazz and I in front of the building. He pulled over, he got out of his car, and he asked my son for his ID, and I asked him why we were not doing anything. I took the hood off my head immediately, because I didn't know who he thought I was. And he said, well, you know, you all are out here. I just want to know who your son is. I said, but my son hasn't done anything. He's with me. And I stood in front of him to protect him. I think my maternal instinct just kicked in. Um, and my son said he didn't have any ID on him. And I said, officer, what's the problem? And he said, well, your son kind of looks like somebody we're looking for. Like, but you can barely see him. It's night, and there were hardly no lights in front of the building. So he eventually um, left, let us go. Uh, that was very disturbing, and it was frightening because the officer had his hand next to his weapon, and I did not want anything to happen to my son. I was not concerned about my safety, but I was concerned about my son's. And he was about, like I said, about 15 at that time. And that's it. Do you think those incidents in your personal experience with police officers would in any way prejudice you um, uh, in examining any of the facts brought to any cases before this board? No, I don't. I've had too many good experiences uh, with police officers. Um, I know the jobs that they are supposed to be doing. Those are just two negative ones uh, that I had. I know that many people have had a whole lot of others, but yeah. Do you have any family members um, or close friends or acquaintances even that are members of the police department? No, not that I'm aware of. Mm -mm. Okay, your uh, position at Better Family Life, uh, Better Family Life, as you note in your application on page seven, uh, does have contracts with the state and the city of St. Louis. Um, are you, is your position paid for out of any of those contracts with the city? No. Do you think that um, your position there uh, in any way um, could be uh, leveraged to influence you in any way on uh, any of these cases? No. Okay. Um, oh, uh, what, uh, I'm sorry, what ward did you live in? 26. 26. 26. 
Okay, no other questions. Okay, okay thank you. Alderman Vicaro. Yeah, just one question. Usually Antonio asks it, but did uh, did you come to this on your own, or did someone from approach you to get on the board? I came on my own. Someone talked to you oh. and said, we need you on there? Mm -mm. But when I made the decision that I wanted to do this, I told Alderman Kennedy first, and I told Alderman Williamson second. Okay. Well, that was and a, they were both supportive. Usually that, and he didn't answer. She, she said so in her, uh, Alderman Kennedy answered. Just oh. He beat me to it. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. It's okay. <laughs> but thank you. And no other questions. Okay. okay. Except you don't look 60. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Alderman Cohn. No questions at this time. Okay. Alderman, yeah. Alderman, Co Alderman Coder. No questions at this time. Alderman Spencer. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, so, how you live in the 26th ward? Can you talk about how long you've lived there and if you've lived in other parts of St. Louis City? Sure. I have lived in the 26th ward for 23 years. Yes, I have lived in other parts of the city when I was a child. I lived at 4877 Penrose. Mm. Uh, before that, I lived on Fountain Avenue, and I don't remember the address because we moved off of there when I was five years old, so I know the house, but I don't remember the address. Yeah. Um, and um, prior to moving to our home on Bartmer, we lived out in University City. So. Um, so we talked about how the board is made up of a pretty diverse group of folks and obviously you're going to be looking at some very tough um, situations. Can you talk about your experience with conflict resolution and how you might be able to bring consensus um, on a board such as this? Sure. Um, I think the first thing to take into account is my own ability to, to listen. and. Um, speak when I feel I have something valuable to say. Um, I believe in uh, cooperative consensus, and that does not always mean that the parties involved in the conflict will be in agreement with each other, but the goal is to work through a process where at least everyone will feel some degree of satisfaction with the outcome. Um, that requires patience, it requires analytical thinking, it requires asking questions, it does require that you listen, that you quiet your own spirit so that you can actually hear what is being said, that you are observant of individuals and their behavior. Sometimes it may take into account uh, associations that people have, personal associations, business associations, um, so that's what I believe I can lend to a process that may have, that may be contentious and that may have a lot of conflict in it. Uh, you talked about a specific incident with your son and I was flipping through your resume here and I might have missed. Did you uh, talk about resolution of that incident or how that was resolved with your son? Did you, uh, he was a young man at that time, did you? Mm -hmm. Uh, talk with him about that particular incident and how uh, that might have impacted his uh, experience as a young man? Um, I think it, yeah, we did talk about it. Um, he was upset, you know. Um, his immediate reaction was, Tay was said, Ma, you didn't have to protect me, I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I did have to protect you because um, I didn't know what that police officer was gonna do. I think that it um, jaded him for a while because the police officer, and unfortunately, he was African American. Um, I say unfortunate because um, his approach to us was not with any degree of respect for just our personhood with two people walking down the street not doing anything. And I think it caused him initially to have a negative version of the police and to uh, reinforce many of the issues that young black men of his age group have to deal with with the police. 
And um, unfortunately, when he got to be of a age and a height where he might be an object for the police to stop, my husband had to start schooling him on how do you deal with a police officer who has a gun, who is authorized and empowered to use it so that you walk away from the situation with your life and not being hurt. So he started being um, schooled on that when he was about 11 years old. And um, he has different views now because he is older, he's 26, um, he's a father, um, he works differently with the police in his job, um, and he has um, increased his listening skills, so. It usually yeah. happens after 15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you talk about what your son does, and how, or it, maybe just how he works with, with police officers in sure, his job? Sure, sure. Um, he is a consultant for Better Family Life in our community outreach department. So he does a lot of work with um, the police officers who work with us, working with people who uh, are um, on parole who need uh, do community service work. Uh, when we do our amnesty days in the summertime as a part of our annual summer festival, uh, we have to work with different police departments mm -hmm. in the St. Louis metropolitan area. So he has quite a bit of interaction with the officers themselves, sometimes with the captains. Um, I guess occasionally with some court officials, not too much though on, on occasion. Well, thank you. That's all I have. And thank you again for um, mm -hmm. volunteering your time for this. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All the women green. Don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you for the comprehensive nature of your application. It was you provided more information than I think just about anybody has this you're far, welcome. and it was really great to hear kind of your whole background and your narrative. So I just appreciate it. Thank you. Alderman Davis, yeah. No questions. We know each other too well. Alderman Hubbard, do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. <coughs> any other follow up questions from members of the committee? If not, we'd like to thank you very much oh, for sure. being here and having the interest to serve. Oh, my pleasure, and thank you all very much. Thank I'm looking you. forward to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next set of uh, interviews are on this Thursday. We'll have three individuals. It's on the schedule. We start at 10 o'clock, and we'll just take them all the way through. Okay, there's nothing else, then that uh, completes our meeting. Our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>